I'm Lizzie, um, I'm the youth pastor at St Peter's Brighton and we are going to talk about social media today. I mean, aren't we so grateful for technology? We get to have a Focus Alive event, we get to stay connected with our friends, we get to play games together online, it's a tool that keeps us connected. I have a question for you that relates to social media. What kind of influencer are you? Perhaps you'd love to be paid to be on the gram or on YouTube or on TikTok. Perhaps you love sharing memes and silly kind of content. Perhaps you use your voice to fight for justice. Perhaps you're a silent scroller and um, you think no one pays attention to what you say online. I'd like for you to keep that question of what kind of influencer are you in mind as we explore the weird and wonderful world of social media. Now, I don't know what perspective you're coming from as you approach this subject. Maybe you've just been allowed a social media account and you're kind of prepping yourself. Perhaps it's a real source of anxiety for you. Maybe you just want a couple tips to kind of help you along. As we explore, if questions do come up, do write them down, do take them to your youth leaders or bring them to me, my email address should be appearing on the screen. But we are going to explore social media with a few questions that will hopefully help you in your own navigation. When we talk about social media, we are essentially talking about leadership. Leadership is influence. The world we live in, has taken the word influence or influencer and kind of slightly skewed our understanding of it. Online it says an influencer is a person with the ability to influence potential buyers of a product or service by promoting or recommending the items on social media. But influence actually boils down to leadership and leading people to do or be something or someone that you have impacted them towards. I would love for every single one of you to know that you have the potential to be leaders in these spaces and for you to know that you have the potential to influence influencers. Many of us can be passive users of social media where we allow our feeds and the things we engage with to sort of happen to us and we sit and scroll and pay attention to whatever pops up. But instead of taking this approach, I'd love to encourage us to be proactive users. This means we take control of what we are scrolling through. We can reject or accept um, the things that our feeds, we can reject or accept the things on our feeds and we decide what we engage with rather than letting the algorithms take control. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. I'm going to pray. Yeah, Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together all across the nation um, to get to know your word, to get to know you just a little bit more. And Lord, we just pray that you will influence us for the absolute best um, for your glory. Amen. So, as I said before, we are going to use the format in, out and up. So firstly, in. The question I have to frame this is what is influencing you? Or who is influencing you? As we invest in social media, the pages and accounts we follow and look to begin to impact us. It impacts our expectations of life, our relationships, our view of ourselves. Why don't you now just take a couple moments to write down some of the ways that you find social media impacts you? 
or who you notice to feel prompted to follow on social media. As we mentioned before, social media is a powerful tool for connection. It isn't inherently bad at all. This passage in Romans tells us to be transformed. We allow the transforming to happen to us by the Holy Spirit. So many of us may be transformed by the trends we see online, the views we adopt because of the people we are influenced by. And some of that change is really great. But we have the opportunity to have the Holy Spirit transform us into the best version of ourselves. Out. So we've done in, out. The question I want to ask you is, what are you projecting? Social media is a big projection of yourself. You choose what gets sent into the world to see. And because of the nature of the shallow world we live in, people get to know you through these snapshots of your life. And we're probably all fairly aware of this, whether it's knowing that going on holiday or going to a party means that you might stock up on like a few Insta posts, or you get told not to post things because it doesn't reflect well on you or the people involved with the photos. And again, I'm going to encourage you to be active users of social media. In the Romans passage before it says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. If we shift the language to mean your whole lives, or in this day and age, your social media presence, it might help us understand that even when we are on social media, what we are outputting is a constant sacrifice to Jesus. That living sacrifice may practically feel like a hit to your followers or your likes. What projection is Jesus calling you to present online? And finally, up. In, out, up. How can our social media presence be less about us and more about God? In 2 Timothy 3, it says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Whew, heavy. Now, I'm not calling the end of days, um, but this passage is interesting because it calls out the behaviour that we see online. Social media builds narcissism. The look at me, I am the most important thing attitude, which is absolutely the opposite of the compassion that Jesus lived out. I believe that you can use social media and not become completely self-obsessed. But the creators of these platforms have used science to make them addictive and favours those who know how to promote themselves. It's a me-first space. It is quite a countercultural thing to make social media less about your own gain and I'm just saying here, I'm not anti-selfies or anti-posting about achievements or great things, but maybe just check why you're posting them and more about the growth of the kingdom of God. In, out, up. Now you may have thoughts or questions, you might feel challenged or frustrated or whatever the feelings that you're feeling. I would really encourage you to write them down, explore these feelings, chat to a youth leader or one of your friends and pray. I suggest that you just take a few minutes now how God might be using your social media to impact for his glory. 
Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity and I just pray that these words that um, I've just shared, that I pray that you will be using them, that um, yeah, these young people who have tuned in, listened to this, that they're exploring wisdom. And so Lord, I just pray that they will know you, that they will um, feel confident in who they are in you and that they will be um, incredible influences for your glory. Amen.